Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona, reference 116520 in stainless steel. You can see and you can purchase this Rolex chronograph on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details for this in-house caliber Rolex Daytona. Now the watch debuted in 2000 and that was the first generation of in-house caliber Rolex Daytona. The model line for the most part is still with us. There have been tweaks and variations but for the most part when we talk about the current generation Rolex Daytona in the year 2018 we're still talking about the generation that debuted with the new millennium and the very first of those watches bore the serial code P. That was the year 2000 for Rolex and so it is with this watch right here, a P serial number, including some unique early build features of dial and clasp that I'll get to in a moment. Let's talk about the fit though, which has been largely static since the modern automatic Daytona debuted in 1988. The proportions of the case are 40 millimeters across the round of the case from 9 to 3, not including pushers, crown guard, or crown. In terms of thickness, it's best described as a slim watch, 12.3 millimeters, not one of the rotating bezel Rolexes with a generously sloped conical tachymeter bezel and small curved lip to the sapphire, it easily slips underneath a dress cuff. The watch is 46.7 millimeters from lug to lug, but if you include the bracelet and its solid end links, which you can see flare out beyond the lugs, the true measurement across the wrist is a more contemporary 51 millimeters. So the watch does have a good wrist presence, even as its pre-super case elegance allows it to wear quite well in terms of proportion and security on an oval wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference. Now the bracelet is a handsome piece. Let me slowly withdraw my hand here. As you can see, all solid center links, solid end links, and though the clasp is the pre-2007 first generation six digit Daytona clasp, that is, it's the first generation clasp featured on the six digit reference Rolex Daytona. Nevertheless, it's nicely executed. Everything about it feels and looks Rolex. And critically, it still includes Rolex's five millimeter easy link. That was part of the watch from the beginning. So you can take in or take out five millimeters as hot, cold activity or inactivity dictate. The watch is gorgeous. You can see there's a contrasting satin and polish pattern across the links, but the case is all in high polish. The tachymeter scale is in high polish, and you can see despite the age of this example, the lacquer within all of the numerals, indices, and letters are completely intact. Nothing's been polished off, nothing's been thinned out, nothing's been blanked out. The watch is essentially as it would have emerged from the authorized dealer in the year 2000. Now the dial does feature some variations. The indices at 9 and 3 are different on this early build model. You can actually see at the base of the dial, 27, 28, 29, have disappeared, the, the seconds indices, and then after the signature at six o'clock and the index at six o'clock, you can see that minutes 31, 32, and 33 have disappeared. Moreover, and you can see this most easily from this angle, the hands at center are much thinner than later production. These are known as the skinny hands. Very early production. This watch is a little bit of a time capsule. One of the reasons we don't have a rabid collector scene for contemporary watches is because there is a lack of scholarship to delineate just what the variations of contemporary watches are. We tend to think of dial variations with Rolex watches starting no earlier than, for instance, the 80s. We talk about rail dials, cream dials, crazing. We talk about gloss dials and matte dials. Rarely do we talk about dial variations in Rolex watches made during this century, but we should because the distinctions exist. Better to get ahead of the trend. Now, the watch is a handsome combination of white gold indices on a white base. That's true. It is white. It is not silver. It's not a sunburst. It is not a matte metallic. It's a gloss white. All the registers feature a concentric brushed circular gray that runs around their tracks and then within the case the calling card of this generation of Daytona, the in-house Rolex Caliber 4130. It was Rolex's introduction to in-house complications and long power reserves. A vertical clutch column wheel chronograph thus 
crisp to operate and smooth to engage. You can also leave it running, that's the advantage of the vertical clutch, and there's no hazard to the chronograph or the movement and you can just watch seconds at center with minutes and hours. The other refinement being a three-day power reserve, 72 hours when fully wound. Smooth bi-directional automatic winding, it is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. The Paracrom Blue Breguet overcoil would not come until after 2007, but the watch was built with a Breguet overcoil for concentric beating and resistance to gravitationally or positionally induced timing deviation from the beginning. Now, of course, it does feature hacking seconds, pull the crown, stop the balance, halt the movement, and synchronize to a reference time. That's a refinement the prior Zenith El Primero based caliber 4030 did not have. So this is a watch that represents Rolex durability and Rolex's mechanical refinements of the modern era inside, but externally Rolex's belief that planned obsolescence has no place in the house of the five-point coronet. That is to say, this watch effectively looks like the 1988 Generation 1 automatic chronometer Daytona. It does not obsolesce. You don't recognize this year's model versus last year's. Aside from small details like the ones we discussed, this is effectively a timeless design. You could have easily argued from an arm's length, even to an expert, that this is a watch from 2014 and they would have been hard pressed to tell you otherwise. And that's the wonderful thing about Rolex. You get mechanical integrity and design integrity. Finally, even if you are not a trackside sportsman and you like to get wild and wet, thanks to the screw down crowns, you get 100 meters water resistance. So whether you are racing at Daytona or simply sunning yourself on the beach at Daytona, this is the perfect option. See it and own it on our website.